Hello lovely people. If you're new here, hi, I'm Jessica. I'm disabled and I've grown up being chronically ill. Although no one realised that until I was a teenager. Before then they just thought I was annoying and accident prone. Probably still both of those things. But I'm also now deaf, always in pain and really easily confused. Subscribe if that's your content. I'm also married to someone who is perfectly well and isn't disabled and like a lot of other people in interabled relationships, I'm often told, wow, your wife must be such an angel. And I mean, sure, she's great, but she's not an angel just because she loves me. She's actually a monster unless she has a cup of tea in the morning, but we'll put the pin in that one. Even a therapist said to me, your life sounds like it must be very hard on your wife. She must be very drained. You're so lucky to have her. You think I'm an innately draining human being? You think I'm so awful that only the top 1% of nice people, otherwise known as angels, would be willing to put up with me? And the awful thing about me is that I'm disabled? I think you'll find I'm actually a cat. I enjoy baking yummy muffins. I'm always turned out nicely, and I can make someone fall asleep really quickly by stroking their head. Other skills include being able to find the silver lining in anything, organizing overly complicated romantic gestures, and color coordinating like a pro. Plus, I have great hair. Whilst it may be true that few able-bodied partners would be willing to date a disabled person, and I'm saying may be true based on my own dating research commonly known as 70 different first dates, reminding me of this fact doesn't make me think that the person who is willing to date me is an angel. It just makes me think badly of the ones who said it was too much. I personally don't think emotion is about choices in that way. I don't think we actively choose who we're going to love. We just fall into it. And once we're there, we do everything for that person without a second thought. Because of course you do. They're your world. Many people might say no to a hypothetical disabled partner. I mean, my own wife probably would have done before meeting me. But then they happily jump in when it's a real life situation. Is my wife an angel? Yes, I think she is. But am I also an angel? Wife. Yes. Thank you. You are. <laughs> are we also both Even though you've made me crouch down for the entire intro, just for that moment. <laughs> <laughs> it was very dramatic. It was it? You did well. <laughs> are we also both incredibly annoying to be around sometimes? Definitely. Yeah. 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 Because we're humans. Almost half of people say that they feel awkward talking to someone with a disability. So I imagine there's an even greater figure when it comes to actually asking someone out on a date. So I wanted to make a video with my able-bodied half that would help you feel a little less awkward if there's a really cute girl in your class that you'd like to ask out but she has a disability so you're not sure how to proceed or maybe said girl sent you this video in which case you should probably take it as a massive hint. Hello. At the same time, I don't know a lot of interabled couples and I'd love to know more about their lives. So if you're disabled in dating, you might take something from this video as well. We're going to be answering questions suggested by members of the Calgren Fozard Club, my own little inner circle right here on YouTube. You can become a member by clicking the join button below and thus get access to behind the scenes videos, a downloadable bundle, a members only section of my Discord board and special merch codes with custom emojis, my little face after your name. I mean, it's a lot of goodness. <laughs> Question number one from Rose Quill. If Claudia is sick or hurt or something, does she ever feel like she can't complain about it because you are still worse off? No. That's like <laughs> family <laughs> resounding no. <laughs> no, 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 no. no. I get told off for moaning too much. Oh, I don't tell you what. Jessica I don't sometimes, really give in to sometimes your Jessica has to like make me more aware. She's like, <laughs> "You do realise you've been going on about your headache for like the past three hours, and I've had a migraine so bad I haven't been able to leave this bed and lift my head off the pillow." I'm like, "Oh yeah, <laughs> sorry." But then I'm also like, "Yeah, but that's." You're every day. Yeah, and I'm like, I don't get headaches that often. This is definitely special for me. Yeah, you definitely complain about injuries and illness more than I do because I guess I'm more used to them. Yeah, and I feel like I'm. I feel that's valid, therefore. Yes. Because I'm like, because it's not my normal, then I can moan about it because I'm like, oh, I don't like it. Yeah, you definitely get more sympathy than, <laughs> than I do. But that's because we're always doing stuff, and I'm like, oh, my finger dislocated. 
Yeah. And you're like, oh, pop it back in then. Yeah. Where so is it? <laughs> you're yeah. like, I have a splinter and we have to stop the world. But it's also like our personalities. Like you, because you live with a chronic illness and disability, you like to just sort of carry on. Like you want some kind of... You're gonna do. You don't really want too much sympathy. You'd yeah. like a little bit of empathy, empathy sometimes, which sometimes I lack. But I'm like, <laughs> I'm like oh, why are you why are you crying? But I like to be sort of nursed a bit. You, you do. Know, like, oh, look at my finger. And you're just a bit like, oh, you know. I, you yeah. like it when I'm I just... Think it's Brush about it off, love nothing. languages as well. Yeah. So I really love giving, and I think I would no matter what my physical situation is. I really love looking after someone, and you really love being looked after, mm. regardless of the actual physical needs within our relationship. It's a good question. <laughs> okay, Daisy by Design asks how to not feel like a burden for being able to do limited housework. How do you divide up household responsibilities? Well. I I do the cooking, yeah. the washing up. Uh -huh. Both of these are because Jessica can't really like be around hot things because she can't always like, she's got a delayed sense of when something's hot. And sometimes she forgets. Apparently she doesn't realise, you know, marigold gloves exist and therefore she could probably do the washing up. And I could, and I've told her many times, I could just fill the bowl with, you know, a temperature that's fine to put your hands in and you could do some washing up. And she's like, <laughs> I'm great at stacking a dishwasher. You just don't when like we washing had, up. When we had a dishwasher, I was the dishwasher stacker because it's not an area you're, you're great with. You're a dishwasher emptier so. as well. You like putting things away. She packs clothes when we're like mm -hmm. going away. I hate packing, um, but you're really rubbish at unpacking. Anyway, the point is I don't really mind that much because as we said in the previous question, she like, you know, attends to my <laughs> other needs, like gives me foot rubs and uh, I do, I strokes do. my head to sleep. Rubs. And she makes me my cup of tea first thing in the yeah. morning. I make your lunch, your packed lunch. Yeah, she makes so me my packed lunch. So I feel like we do our even share of it. Yeah. It doesn't feel unbalanced. Just find different ways that and you're able to contribute to yeah. the other person. It doesn't have to be physical. It can be emotional or mental. If you're a sounding board for someone, like you like to talk about something that's maybe stressed you out, my listening is an active part of being a useful household member. Mm -hmm. Um, Cindy Floyd says, we've been able to see Claudia try activities like baking that Jessica really enjoys. Are there any hobbies or activities Claudia enjoys that you try to do together that Jessica really kind of doesn't like? When we go to the Lake District or like a holiday like that, I really like going for like, I like putting on my hiking boots and going for like a long walk. When I say long walk, I'm not like a hiker. I'm not like a walker like some of our friends and family. Like, I mean, I'd like to go for a round trip, maybe like a three, four hour walk with a pub stop in between. That's kind of my nice kind of hike. Not like rock climbing that thing. No. But Jessica can't do that. She'll do like a half hour walk and that's her. Maybe yeah. even a half hour would be a bit much. That's, I refute that in video form. Uh, <laughs> click on the link above to see Claudia and I in the Lake District walking for more than half an hour. When? Oh, it was like two years ago. <laughs> three years ago. <laughs> yeah. That's a while ago. <laughs> Is that when we walked around Tarn House? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Oh, well, I stopped you, you know from doing a hobby that I don't um, know about. I did a stone carving course, and like rather than doing it with me, Jessica just signed up and did to do a painting course. Yeah. So we were like on this course, like in this um, site together. And so we had lunch break and stuff together. Yeah. But we were doing different courses, so that was quite nice. Can find a way around any problem. Christina asks, as someone who is single and looking to date, at what time do you bring up mental and physical disabilities? I'm autistic, though I've passed very well and have some chronic conditions that are managed, so they aren't hugely visible. I don't want to freak out a potential partner, but I also want to be honest. This is such a good question. I get asked this a lot. Mm. At what point do you bring it up and whether even before, you know, if you're making an online dating profile, do you put on it, I have a thing mm. or not? Yeah. I don't think I put on my dating profile things like, I'm deaf. You I'm didn't say anything this, about I'm that. Your, like... Not in this, as a conscious choice, more as a, here are the things that I think are important that you know about me as a person, as a personality. And I want to connect on that level before we then connect to anything else. But I always on first dates told people because yeah. I don't want to waste my time having five dates with you. Well, you were wearing a one you. hearing aid because you, you usually only wear one. Yeah. And I just literally, I thought, I thought, the first thing I thought was, I thought it was a Bluetooth thing. Because did you have the so laptop cute. out in front of you as well? Yeah, yeah when you walked in. Or your iPad. Because she, she was an hour late. You were typing on a little keypad on the iPad with a, with a hearing. So I just thought you were like working, like with your Bluetooth hearing. And thing then the and date continued and she was just waiting for me to remove the Bluetooth headset. <laughs> 
Yeah, terribly rude. <laughs> and then I think you told me, like, oh, I have HNPP. And I was like, what's that? And then you told me, and I was like, oh, cool. I mean, I think it helps that you're a medical person. So yeah. You're not super phased by things. No, but I also wasn't rude to, like, probe you with loads of questions about it either. Because mm. I remember when you first met my sister, she was really, because she's a doctor, she was really asking you a lot and you found it quite, in, like, like an interrogation. Yeah, it was. And I'm like, I am not a doctor in my condition. I can't tell you the precise exact gene things. Mm. Chromosome 13, and who PMP 22. Where did you get diagnosed and how long have you been ill? I think she was just being protective over me. I think yeah. she had more of a like concern about it than I did. Yeah, I think you're right. It's like, well, so she didn't fancy me. So. <laughs> well, yeah, that's... You were looking at me with like the veil of, ooh, I yeah. fancy you, but you have some side stuff. She was just like, Girl, side stuff. I personally think I always had a chat with someone before I met them. Yeah. So then maybe you drop it in in the chat part. So you know they're interested, but you haven't had to have the face-to-face -face contact and go through the whole like. And if you have physical disabilities, going to the yeah, date say, can be so draining. I was say, like the whole effort. Like, oh, you both the, yeah, like the emotional and physical effort of actually going to a date. Even an able-bodied person, mm. there's like a physical effort because you've got to get dressed. You got to like, you got to like get there. Thing. Like, this gotta, could be the one. Yeah, you got to plan the logistics. You got to think like, is it going to be too noisy where we go? Should I drink uh, an alcoholic beverage? Will that person be drinking? I don't know. Should we eat? So you're just like thinking all this stuff. Dating is difficult. Yeah. So rather than like getting to that point, I always think it's better to like I mean I as an able person like even I'm just saying like I always thought it's better to just have uh, build some rapport yeah first before you've actually met them I disagree oh because I think that your spark can win over things that you might have thought theoretically would be a problem so on paper I'm not a catch but in person <laughs> I'm clearly very charming. You married me. So. <laughs> I don't know about what you're talking about on paper. You're on a medical paper. Yeah. yeah. But like, <laughs> but I think, you know, written down everything to do with me. Would you have been like, okay, I can deal with this. But when that's actually a human being and you can ask them questions, I think there's the worry of if someone's typing to you and they're like, oh, I have this thing. And the other person's like, don't know that. Gonna Google it. Google's really scary. If you Google any condition, you will get like the complete worst. Like, mm. Oh God. Maybe if I had, I mean, it's easy for me to say, oh, I wouldn't have judged someone if they'd said on chat before I'd met them. Maybe you need to see the, like, ex extent of that, like, illness or disability for you to, like, feel, oh, can I adapt to that? Yeah, to get it. And also just to see, like, is this a person that, who's so great and so charming and so nice that I can... I mean, the deal breaker for me at the time, I mean, I don't really drink so much alcohol anymore, but I did a lot then, would have been if you had told me before I met you that you don't drink alcohol and you're teetotal, I would have been like, okay. Yeah, I fooled her. <laughs> I fooled her into a date in a pub. I didn't tell her I didn't drink. Which is really bad. <laughs> it's just that weird British culture that when, especially when you're like in your early 20s, it's like, if you're a bit of a social drinker, mm. you find it kind of weird when someone doesn't drink. But I think it's more just because you think, oh, they're judging me. Oh no, I genuinely don't care. Eric H asks, what do you do when you need more than Claude can physically give? What happens when Claude is exhausted? What do you do each individually and what do you do as a couple in that situation? Firstly, I'm not Jessica's full-time carer. Yeah. Like I go so to fun. work um, four days a week, nine to five, and Jessica has um, Clara here who like is her carer slash YouTube media Insert consultant. And, like lots of many jobs that she does. Ta -da! Yeah. And then She's you great. have a, I, I can't sign. I'm still really, I still am bad at it. I haven't learned how to sign yet. <laughs> <laughs> and so obviously when we go to events, Jessica has a sign interpreter, either the one she normally works with, Rufan, or one that's booked for her. So I can't do that. So I think we're both quite good at recognizing what each, what I can't do for you and making sure we've got someone in place who can do that. Um, if we're on holiday, and obviously then we're together 24 seven, I think it's a different situation really because we're on holiday. Yeah, so there's not really so work. much stress. So when you take sort of the pressure of having to be places on time or like, I think that would get quite difficult. So when we were in Malaysia, we went to Malaysia for two months and we were together 24 seven and you were the person who had to look after me all the time. I feel like you had a, a, a larger pool to draw from yeah. at that time because you weren't going yeah, to Yeah, I had more energy. 
and also dealing I think, with other things. And also I think I'd mentally prepared myself that this was going to be a slower paced trip to, for me than what I'd done in the past or if you hadn't been there and I had to just accept that. So some days we would just like not do anything like we'd just stay in the like apartment or the hotel room and order like room service but because I'd <laughs> accepted that that's what we would be doing I kind of just embraced it and like oh this is nice I'm actually relaxing you know but yeah. I completely went off the topic there. No no that's fine. <laughs> um, have a good support network and have realistic expectations. See? You made a good answer. Um, another question is, how are we doing right now? And the answer is, not necessarily great. No. no. Um, I don't know why I'm doing my face. I'm like trying to smile. But it's just turning we into have, like a We have building coming. work at the moment, um, which is happening because we've managed to lock the front of the house to the back of the house. <laughs> so we don't actually have to come into contact with our builders. So social distancing continues. Um, but we're just getting but, more and more confined yes, in our house as they fewer take over fewer more, rooms and more of it. As they intrude, and they've taken off the back of our house and also cut the pipes. So <laughs> we're freezing cold. And there's nothing underneath this room right now except for some steel poles just holding yeah. up the floor. Yeah. I mean, I'm impressed we've not fallen through. But uh, just to kind of cope with everything that is going on at the moment, I'm going to take next week off posting so there will be no video. Haha, <laughs> never mind. We didn't realise we actually filmed for an hour. So we've decided to turn this video into a two-part series and part two will be coming to you next Tuesday at our usual time. They will resume the week yes. after. We need some time to just like Netflix and chill. Oh my god. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's exactly what's happening. Look, I'm an oldie. I have no idea what that means other than Netflix and chill. Okay. Oh, See you soon. Bye. Bye.